In this video, we're going to look at drawing on surfaces, and we'll see that this is a useful way to create ROIs both on the surface and also that we can make in the volume, and it's probably even the, the best way to make ROIs for the volume, typically, uh, depending on what you're, if, if you want something that's an anatomical region. Okay, so I'm going to navigate in the boot camp data to a directory that has output from FreeSurfer. So uh, all this stuff has been brought into uh, Sumo land using at Sumo make spec FS. And if I type LS, there's a lot of things we're used to seeing here. The STD 141, these are the 141 uh, density meshes. So this has a larger number of points per brain. This is the standard mesh with slightly lower density specification files and gifty surfaces and minimal data sets. Part parcellation files here, the ones renumbered by AFNI, and we've kind of grouped them into these useful tissues that are, are standard across all the, the brains translated from FreeSurfer. Okay, great. As we saw earlier, there are some run scripts in here. And at the moment, the one I'm just gonna run here is the one to make a left hemisphere surface. If I just type more, so we see that quickly, you see that there's nothing very magical. It's a sumo command with basically two inputs, a spec input, which stands for specification file. And this is opening up a standard 141 mesh for this subject and just the left hemisphere set of surfaces. And if I quickly look at that, the specification file basically uh, loads in all the different surfaces that are related to each other. And then it has some meta information that it knows how they're organized and what they all are. So that's fine. These kind of specification files, we usually don't have to make them. There's a program in Suma called QuickSpec that you can use, uh, but basically they're, they're always made by at Suma make spec FS anyways for us. And this other thing, the SV stands for surface volume. This is the another data set output by at Suma make spec FS. And this is what is just used to give us coordinate information and location and space. All right, so let's run this script. And this will open up Suma. And in this case, as we saw, it's just a single hemisphere. Okay, fine, so we can rotate it left click and drag, all that kind of stuff. Let's op go to tools now, and there's draw ROI, or you can type control D, which is usually just the fastest way. So control D while the mouse is there. Okay, and now you see that my cursor has changed. And if I, I can still left click and rotate here, but if I, if I now right click, that's gonna start me drawing. Okay, so let me zoom in on my brain a little bit here. Maybe I'll make this bigger. Okay, what we wanna do is we wanna draw an ROI. And we have some buttons up here that we'll use. We can decide what kind of label to give our ROI. Maybe I'll just give it a label that says uh, surf ROI. I don't, I don't know particularly why. You can choose what value. So right now we're drawing an ROI that has a label here and an integer value of one that will be at every node. Okay, so now we might think about, let's say here there's this um, sulcal and gyral pattern, fine. Uh, before I start drawing, let me note that right now I can draw as is if I right click and drag. If I go here and select pen, you'll see now my cursor is a little bit different. This would now, if I left click and drag, that would kind of draw my boundary for my ROI. So whichever way you prefer, if you want to use the left click or right click uh, with pen on here, now if I left click, then I'll start getting a, a line. I'm just gonna, well, okay, I'll leave it on pen now. Okay, so let's say I want to draw an ROI and get this nice uh, feature here. Okay, so right now I'm gonna left click and drag and you see the line forming and things are good, and I go back near here to complete it. And then you see something's a little bit funny. The, the line kind of recording where I drag goes there. Let me turn off pen for a second so I can left click and rotate. And you see that the line actually went somewhere totally different than where I wanted, which is kind of frustrating, right? We think, um, okay, well, let's see here. What, what's happening? The, the problem
problem is is that the sulcal and gyral patterns have these kind of valleys right and uh, ridges and things like that and just because i'm drawing on a flat surface from here to here doesn't mean that the program which is trying to record the smooth continuous path can get from here to here easily in this case it went all the way around here blah 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 and back okay so this is a, a little bit of a trick to drawing on a surface that i have this extra consideration of these sulcal and gyral patterns so let me click undo okay and basically it would be easier to draw if i didn't have these ridges and um, uh, sulcal patterns and things like that so i can actually draw on a topologically similar surface that doesn't have these uh, ridges and features in that same way if i hit let's see if i bring this to the, the front now if i hit the, the period or full stop key once twice i get to my flat map here and this is a nice surface to draw on because I still see all the topological features here. It's still colored by convexity. So positive and negative convexity in the light gray and dark gray respectively. But now I'm not gonna have those, those ridges where I kind of lose track of the, of the drawer as I go. Okay, so um, yeah, so let's, let's go here then. Now I'm, I'm drawing I'll just draw like this just to show I can. So in this case, again, if I left click, it's rotating. I, I right click and draw something here. Okay, so now I'm going to take this feature and just kind of draw around it a bit. Let's see how this looks. Okay, and I get close to the end and I stop. Okay, now you see that this is tracked much better. Basically, you should just, uh, in general, it's, it's really nice to draw on this um, inflated surface here. Then we don't run into the problem we had before. Now for my ROI, I want to complete this line. There's a button here called join. So there. Okay, so first I draw the line, then I, I join it to complete the ROI. And if you notice, the line changed color from green to blue. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to tell the program, do I want my ROI to be on this what I would probably call the inside of the line or this outside of the line. And you have to define it because you might have a giant ROI that's like half the brain or something. So you just um, click inside the part that you want. So in, in this case, I'm going to right click. Okay, now you see that it turned purple. And then when I, if I'm happy with that, I can say finish. Okay, so that was a, uh, four-step process basically. I drew the line, then I clicked join, then I clicked inside the region that I wanted, then I clicked finish. And here is my ROI and you can see the bound at every step something about the boundary or color changes so you know that you've done it. Okay and now let's let's save this file here. Okay so I'm going to go save and I'm going to give it a name I'm just going to call it uh, new underscore ROI dot LH. And it's good to, to note whether it's left hemisphere or right hemisphere uh, for organization. Those are, are two different objects. Okay, so now I click save. And I think if I go here to my terminal, ls minus LTR, there. I see a new uh, file here. It's called the left hemisphere nimble.roi. Nimble stands for neuroimaging markup language and ROI means this is an ROI data set. Okay, now this is fine. This is not a surface data set. So if we want to first translate this, uh, sorry, if we want to eventually translate this into an ROI data set, we first need to translate it into a surface. And then from there we can project uh, from that, that full surface into the volume. If I type ls run again to see the scripts that are here, there's actually a script that will help me do this. And let me just open this for the moment so we can take a look at what's going on. This script here, um, th this if condition is basically there's an, an ROI here already called tuna.lefthemisphere. This is just a, an example ROI that's that's here already in the data set, so you have one. Um, so if you just run the script without any arguments, it will 
basically create uh, from this nimble ROI, it'll make this nimble D set and then this volumetric region also called tuna. I will take a look at using the one that we just drew, which is fine, but if you wanna see the, the standard one, we'll take a look at that. So this is a two-step process now to turn our surface ROI into a volumetric data set. First, there's a command ROI to data set that's gonna take as input whatever our name of our file is. And in this case, it's just built for the left hemisphere nimal ROI one. So this works whether it's left hemisphere, or right hemisphere, it's just you would change it and adjust it. In this example, we're using a left hemisphere one. So that's why this is here, okay? And then this is going to create the prefix, the output, a nimal data set. So this is going to make a proper surface data set from our ROI. And this just means the difference is here, there's only values at the nodes where we drew. So basically the thing that is saved is not a full data set with information everywhere. It's just the information on these nodes. So first we need to make a full data set where every node has information kind of zero and one. That's what this command does. Once we have that, then we're gonna run this command to turn our surface into a volume with 3D surf to vol. And this basically loads in um, standard input information. Actually, all these are standard input information that you would have from having run Free Surfer. And you just have to decide now how you wanna turn your uh, ROI on a surface into a volume. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two surfaces the smooth white matter boundary, so the gray white boundary and the peel. So if you wanna think about this, it's kind of the inner gray matter and out, outer gray matter boundary. And there are corresponding nodes between these. And we just drew on some of those on one surface. So now you can think about having the inner surface and the outer surface with corresponding nodes kind of painted here, and it'll fill in voxels that fall inside that those inner and outer surfaces between the nodes that have been painted in here. And so it's the, the specification for that is here, it's gonna use the mode value of whatever is on a surface, having drawn 12 steps uh, between corresponding nodes. So hopefully you've seen some of the other Sumo videos uh, describing a little bit the multiple surfaces and projection, that's how this works. And it's gonna give us a new data set like that. Okay, and then hopefully we don't run into this person here. Okay, so now let's try T shell run ROI to D set. And up here in the script, there's just um, one argument that's, that's needed, which is the prefix of the name of the file. So everything before .lh. So let me remind myself of what the file name is. So, okay, T shell run ROI to D set. And this is my my full name here, almost. This is the part that is looking for this prefix before LH, okay? Okay, there we go. So now it's created this new, um, new ROI here. And if I type LS minus LTR, I see that it gave me first a nimble D set, so a, a surface full of information, and then it made this this volume here. Okay, so let me just type AFNI. Great, and now let me overlay my new data set, which is called new ROI LH S2V, so surface to volume ROI. Okay, set. And now I could surf around and look for it, or I could kind of cheat and say clusterize Pretty sure there's just more than 40 voxels. I'll just put a very small number there, report and jump. Okay, and here's my new ROI. All right, and so that is really kind of filled in the sulcal and gyral patterns um, much more nicely than, uh, than I would have done so easily if I was trying to draw slice by slice in the AFNI viewer here. So I kind of see how it's painted in there. Um, so this is really a nice way to make ROIs that have a lot of uh, 
sulcal and gyral patterns, right? Remember, if I, if I did this in the AFNI GUI to draw a volumetric ROI, I'd go define data mode, plugins, and there's draw data set. And then I'd draw these voxels here, go to the next slice, these voxels here, next slice, these voxels here, right? So for any kind of complicated realistic brain pattern, it gets tricky. Whereas in SUMA, uh, it's very easy. And if you want to see what that tuna ROI was, I can, this was the other ROI example that was drawn here. Let's see, Those controllers. So this was another kind of complicated ROI drawing here. And actually, maybe what I can do is I can run Suma, so I'm going to run the zero, zero script and AFNI minus nimble. So let's see, larger windows here. Okay, I'm going to type control S to open the surface controller and I'm going to load a, a D set now. So I'm just gonna load that uh, tuna nimble D set so you can see the ROI that was drawn earlier. Open, so you see there, that's the ROI that was drawn. Uh, I hit dot and dot, period key. You can see that that was the ROI that was drawn. And if I overlay an AFNI, one, okay, and again, okay, so here's the, ROI. I'm just going to hit T for talk. Oops, sorry. I need to hit T for talk in the SUMA controller here. So now you can see the surfaces are being sent here and the, the information from AFNI is being sent here. And so now you can see that this, this red ROI, let me change the color here. If I, if I left click on this color bar, it'll invert. Okay. So this is this is the ROI, the projection of the ROI from AFNI to SUMA now. If I go here in the controller, I can switch the data set. So this is the one I drew, and now this is the one that's being projected, and you can see that they match. Okay, so to do that, there's multiple data sets are kind of loaded in SUMA. There's the, the data set that I loaded, the NIML data set of the tuna.lh. And then it also has the information from AFNI and I can switch back and forth between those just to check them out. Okay, so there you go. That's how to draw an ROI in SUMA and the, the benefits of, of turning it into a volume and, and drawing kind of sulcal and gyral ROIs here.